politician, they will take some type of action. They'll make noise, they'll tell the press, they'll tell the authorities, right? And you do get some type of reaction. Clear Romania happens because you don't get that in Romania. Right? You see shady dealings almost every day if you look for them, and you don't, at one point they become a part of your life, you don't even consider them to be, you know, shady. For example, in school, uh, children are routinely required to pay a sort of class fund or school fund, which is illegal, but which nobody questions. This is a, this is a consequence not only of the culture of corruption, but also of the, of the type of uh, faulty political design on the part of decision makers. Because schools are so underfinanced that you don't really have a choice but to add uh, some supplementary financing if you want to invest in your school in any way. In some cases, it is indeed an issue of greed where professors or directors or uh, school principals or whatever try to keep the money for themselves or at least part of it. In other cases, it is a necessity for lack of, a better, for lack of other funding. Again. Systemic corruption isn't just at high level, it's at every level of society. It is indeed a consequence of over 40 years of communism, where the only way to do anything was to know somebody, pick up the phone and call them and ask for favors. This type of informal practice is still very widespread, especially in uh, Romanian administration, where um, Electronic services are still rare, so you still interact directly with uh, people, with bureaucrats. As was pointed out by uh, a member of the Legislative Council of Romania a while back, corruption happens at the intersection of people. If you replace a person with a screen, for example, corruption is going to go down in real terms. Because you're going to expect to get a service without having to pay for it, a service that you're entitled to, and the other person won't come into contact with you to ask for money that they're not entitled to get. And this is one of the main uh, political uh, decisions that we're supporting. We want public administration to become as much reliant on electronic services as possible. We want to digitize as much of the uh, of, uh, public services as possible to reduce instances of low-level corruption. If you start low, well, obviously politicians don't grow on trees. They're not brought by UFOs. They come from the same pool of people that make up the citizenry, right? You get good citizens, you're going to get good politicians. You get bad citizens, well, as we see. Citizens aren't bad necessarily because they want to. Again, in most cases it's a matter of not knowing who you can address, not knowing what you can do, not knowing that you even have a certain right. And it's one of the things that we try to teach people what their rights are. As an example, you see here an entire list called Instruments of Anti-Corruption Struggle. These are things that you can use as a Romanian citizen to fight corruption that affects you directly. And you see here several cases. How to file a penal complaint, for example, if you notice a, a, a violation of the law. How to request uh, in public interest information via the Freedom of Information Act. How you can uh, search for the content of a particular law here how you can uh, check for vacancies, for example, in a government office, in government office to see what candidates are running for office, uh, what the qualifications are, who the people are, so you can monitor as much as you want, and various other things. And the top of the list here is it's an application translated as Ask the State, which you also see here. Now, as the state is an online Freedom of Information Act portal, it's basically a page you can access if you want to ask any question to public authorities for any information that you're entitled to know. Via the Freedom of Information Act of 2001, 
public institutions are allowed are obliged basically to answer to any to any question relating to their activity, their spending, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I'm showing you this because this is one of the cornerstones of, anti of the anti-corruption fight on the informal level. Right? It's not enough to argue for policy at high level, you have to look at the low level as well. And the key to it are the three I's, information, initi um, ini uh, involvement, and initiative. This is the information and involvement part. Basically, you can go here, click start, you ha we have a database of 5,467 public institutions that you can ask for questions such as, how did you spend your budget? What did you do last year? What happened to a petition that I submitted? What are you going to do about, uh, I don't know, a hole in the road? <coughs> Why haven't you taken action regarding, I don't know, a potential illegality? Something along those lines. And surprisingly enough, we do get answers. <laughs> I know, right? Initially, you can see these are, this is the total number of requests that we've sent, over, over 5,000. We've only received about 1,600 answers, right? So roughly 25%. But the response rate has been on the increase. So most of these answers come within the past two years. Even though the application is, has, was launched in, no, it was launched in 2014. So the first year we didn't really get many answers. We sent one request to every single public authority in the country, all of them, 5,000 something, asking for their annual reports. Just that. Where is your annual report? Something that they're obliged to publish on their website. We got about maybe 20% response, maybe. Most of, most, of the, most of the fault for this is that a lot of public authorities are small communal villages who have not even a website at times, not to mention the people required to answer every single request that they get. If you look at just the urban centers of Romania, right, Bucharest, Cluj, Brasov, Sibiu, etc., etc., Yash, Baku, so forth, you do see a lot of uh, reason for optimism, right? People are active, they protest, they go out, they ask questions, they inquire, they monitor. But move away from those areas into the countryside, all of that evaporates, right? One of the main problems that you have is that Almost half of, uh, of the people in Romania still live in urban areas, cut off from any type of political involvement. Right. The local barons that I mentioned earlier oftentimes happen to control all of the economy in a certain commune. They happen to control all of the public offices. And they happen to also control all of the media. So you have a crisis of information in rural areas, you have a crisis of infrastructure, you have a crisis of personnel, and you have a crisis of funding. In these conditions, it is very difficult to talk about anti-corruption in rural areas. But we hope that our efforts, starting in urban areas, can mobilize a core, a, a critical mass of citizens to be involved sufficiently to export good practices to other areas as well. And we have had some success with this. Not as much, but definitely more than, you can definitely see progress as compared to when we started. Now, based on this application, we were able to conduct several analysis. Right? Every now and then we send out um, one request for, I don't know, say the budget to a variety of institutions at national level to see how many of them are willing to share the data, what data they're, in, they're willing to share, and once we have the information, we can analyze to see exactly what was done with the money. And you see several interesting things. 
and we'll talk about that in a second, you can look at various tops, like transparency. Right, we conducted a few analyses, like this one, and you have some interesting pie charts. These are how many ministries in Romania have their activity had their activity reports published last year. 